Hey, my name is James Allen. I'm going to try and show you how I created this school library infographic that automatically updates from a Google form into something called Looker Studio, which is also a Google product. Um, so basically, I kind of thought about some of the things that I would want to tell in my school library story, like that were numerical and that could, you know, be easily tracked and kept up with. Um, I'm not currently in a school library, but if I was, you know, these are some things that I might decide to collect. And obviously these will change based on your situation and your schedule and, you know, what grade level you're teaching in. So what I did was I created a Google form asking these questions. And the form is not for other people. It's just for yourself to input the data. So the form can really be anything you want. Ask any questions that you want. But what's cool about Google Forms is when you click the submit button, it automatically captures the date that you submit that. So that's data that you're collecting too. So if you are doing this weekly or you decide to do it daily or monthly, it's going to keep track of those dates when you put the information in. You'll be able to filter that later on if you want to see like how many books were checked out in February or March, that kind of thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to do this from start. I'm not going to recreate this entire thing. I'm just going to do part of it and then hopefully you'll be able to take it and duplicate these for the um, metrics and numbers that you want. So I'm going to click on first, I'm going to make a new form in, in Google Drive. So I'm going to click on new Google form right there. My library stats. This first question will say how many books were checked out? You know, whatever you want to make it in text doesn't really matter. It's the numbers that are going to matter. So we are going to leave it as short answer because we're going to type in a number as the answer to this one. So I'm going to duplicate this and say, how many classes visited? And I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to do one more. Um, I didn't put this in the other one. I think it might be good though because it'll give you an opportunity to talk about weeding and why that's important. So how many books were weeded this week? All right, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to go to that form and fill it out. And so I would have a link to this somewhere handy, either even on my phone or my iPad or, you know, somewhere on your bookmarks bar where you can get to it really quickly and easily. I'm going to type in, I don't know how many books I checked out this week, 267 and 11 classes visited. I only weeded five books, but that's all right. And hit submit. And I'm actually going to hit submit again and pretend like it's next week, just so we have a little bit of data to work with. Um, big week, 678 books. Hit submit. Now this part's important. So I've got, got my form that's working and I'm collecting the data. I'm going to actually name it to my library stats there. You see, I have two responses. Those are the ones I just filled in. We actually need this to go to a sheet though, a Google sheet. So I'm going to click on link to sheets right here. And it says create a new spreadsheet. There's the name. That's fine. Create. And it will open up a Google Sheets with that data in there. So you can see the automatic timestamp that it puts on there from when you hit submit. It's got the columns with each of those questions. So now we're ready to go to Looker Studio. We're not really going to have to mess with the Google Sheet that much. Uh, I'm going to go to lookerstudio.google.com. And I'm going to do a blank report. I'm going to start this from scratch just like I did the other one. So I'm going to click on blank report right here. And Looker Studio, it, it is a Google product. You should be able to get to this if you're logged in with your Google account. It is a way to display your data um, in a very visual kind of way. And it lets you connect multiple data sources, which is kind of different too than just using Google Sheets or something like that. And it's not an educational product. I mean, it, it has all kinds of uses um, depending on what industry you're in. But I'm going to click on blank report. And the first thing that pops up is this add data to report. And to be honest, I've only used Google Sheets. I kind of messed with Google Analytics once, but really Google Sheets is the only kind of data source that I've used with Looker Studio. And that's fine. Most of the people I know that have worked with this, that's all they've used too. So I'm going to click on Google Sheets. I'm going to click on, there's two here, but I think this top one is the most recent one that I've made. And it'll say, use the first row as headers. That's fine. Uh, and our column headers are unique. That's good. Click on add. And I'm going to say, are you sure? Yes, add to the report. All right. And then what you'll see pop up is this kind of 
um, bland table with just our two records that we have so far. And really, I didn't use this. I don't need this. So I'm going to delete it. Um, and to make this look a little more like the report that I've already completed this one right here, I'm going to go to the theme and layout. You can kind of change this later on if you want, like the text colors and the backgrounds and all that. I'm going to change the layout to, right now it's landscape letter by default. You can change this to your own pixels or I, I usually do this 16 by 9 because that's kind of the size most laptop screens are. So that's done. I'm going to go back to the top right here. I'm going to click on text. There's a little text tool, kind of just like Google Docs um, and slides. And I'm going to say any school library name right here. And it's kind of tiny, so I want to make that bigger. And you do that over here in this menu. And a lot of times I'll make this little text box the actual size of my text so it's easier to click, click on it and not other things. And I'm going to copy this box and paste it. And I'm going to put a little kind of subtitle over here, 2223 Impact Dashboard. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. You can come in and make these colors to match your brand and your school and all that kind of stuff. That just takes a little bit more time and upfront work. But once it's done, you don't have to do it again. It's just kind of stays that way unless you want to make some edits. I actually went to the Noun Project. It's a website that has like a big selection of icons. Um, Canva and Adobe Express use Noun Project inside of their products. So I'm going to click on this little picture image button right here upload from computer and I've got one already saved for kind of like a sample school logo and that's just kind of a placeholder to, so you can kind of see what that would look like there could be but you'll upload your own um, logo next I'm going to add our first metric so first I'm going to click on this text right here and then put books checked out I'm gonna make that a little bigger I think breaking all my font rules of having multiple fonts on a page, but it's an infographic, so that's all right. Then I'm going to go to, this is the um, cool part, the part that automatically updates. I'm going to go to add a chart. And basically the only one I used in that example I showed earlier is the one that says scorecard in total right there. So I'm going to click on that one and click this button. And it says record count, which is not what I want. So this is the scorecard, but I'm going to go over here to where it says chart and setup. And timestamp is fine for the date range, but I don't want record count. I want how many books were checked out. So I'm going to pull that down and drop it on the metric. And then it has some, so it's already going to add those books together right there. I don't want it to say, have that little title right there, the little um, uh, label. So I'm going to go to style and I'm going to say hide metric name right here. So now it's just a number. And instead of this 28 size, I'm going to go up here where it says auto. So that way I can drag this and it's going to get bigger or smaller based on what it needs to be to fit inside of this box. So as that updates, it'll get smaller if it needs to, if, you know, as the number gets bigger. So that's pretty much it on how to make a scorecard. So if I hit refresh data, like I could go in here and let's fill this form out again. Uh, right here. How many books were checked out? Let's do five more books and hit submit. We don't have to fill out all the questions. And I go back here to my report. I'm going to actually say library stats to give it a name. Now, if I go to these three little dots right here, more options, I can hit refresh data. If someone has your live link, this, auto, this kind of automatically updates. It's not like every second, but it's, it's pretty frequent. So you click refresh data and that will jump to 950 because we added those five books in that form submission. So that's pretty much it. And then I go in and basically duplicate this card and this label here. And we'll do books we did. Sometimes it's hard to click on the thing you want to click on. It's kind of a pain, but that's all right. Books we did. And it's obviously not 950, so we've got to change that. Uh, metric. So we go over here to the chart setup again, and we're going to do how many books were weeded into this box. Now, do you see this one's kind of weird, right? It says week 30. Like, what does that have to do with weeded? If you notice, this work, Looker Studio, gets kind of tedious. It's not 
always super perfect on its own. And you kind of have to go in and make some changes. So right here on this little thing, it says books were weeded. You can kind of see where it looks like a date. We don't want a date there. We want a number like it, there are for classes visited and the books checked out. So I'm going to show you how to fix that because it's probably going to come up for you. So you go to resource, the resource menu right here, and click on manage added data sources. And then we're going to click on, there's our date one data source. We're going to click on edit. And you'll notice it says how many books were we did for that one. It says ISO week. We're going to change that to a number, numeric and number. So now it matches the others. And then I'm going to click on done. And I'm going to hit close. And there's our 30 books that are we did. So it kind of automatically updated and fixed itself right there. And it's pretty easy to change the color. You can go into that style um, setting that we talked about over here. Style, change the color. So that's how you make those cards. Let's do the other. We had three, so I'll go ahead and do the third one. This one is how many classes visited. So I'm going to drag this how many classes visited down into the metric. And sum is fine. It's already a number. That's good. I do need to change the text right here. So I'm going to say classes visits. So that part is done. Now, the, the stuff that will take a little more time is if you want to pull in some graphics and icons like I had on that example. So let's, let's add a few of those. Um, image, upload from computer. Let's do the book one. We'll put that right there. And then let's do one more. I think I did this one for classes. So you'll spend some time and make that look nice and the way you want it, like I did on this one and organize things. I will show you, like if you see these gray boxes, those are really just rectangles inside of Looker Studio and you can click that, you can make those right here, um, shape. So you can do a rectangle and it works the same way as really Google Slides. So you see how it kind of puts it over top of there. You can change the order that it's in right here, send to the back. And then I actually just copied that and pasted it and made little divider rectangles. But that's totally up to you. So based on what you want your design to look like. And anytime you want, you can click on a preview of this. So if you go to view, this is what it's going to look like to somebody you send the link to. Um, pretty easy. I'll go back to edit. And let's talk about that real quick because we, we've got this working. I mean, now we just basically use our form to fill in the numbers and this automatically updates. You can embed this on a Google site. You can send out a link to it. Um, it's really pretty easy to use. So you click on share right here. And right now it's restricted, but you can um, make it public and folks can view it. And there's the link just like in Google Docs and Slides. Um, let's do one more thing. This is a little bit more advanced, so you don't have to do this, but you can if you want. We can add um, a, a control right here, and we can do a date range. So, you know, like I was talking about, we could say how many books were checked out just in March or just in February. I'm going to click on date range control and just kind of drop that right here. And since these are all, if you look up in the date range dimension, have timestamp on there, that's already automatically kind of there. If it's not there, you can drag it in from the right side on this data column right here. You can put timestamp right here. So if I go in and select, um, let's say March 29th and hit apply, it's going to say no data because we don't remember we put we filled in our form data today. And that no data looks kind of bad. So I'm going to change that to actually say show a zero if there's no data. And that's right here under style in the chart. Now, if I hit this is so this is basically a filter, like a filter on a spreadsheet. So if I reset, it's going to take that filter away. And let's do just today, right? So um, the 30th. And it shows our numbers 
And then if, if we said 31st to the 31st, it should be zero. Yep. So keep this in mind. Um, up here in this little menu, you can set, you can do like the last seven days, the last 30 days, last week, this week, last month, or you can, you know, do it custom with where you click on the little dates. It's pretty cool. I, something to remember in Looker Studio right now, the way it works, you can't put links in Looker Studio, which is kind of weird. I mean, it's, it's a very specific product. So, so once a person is in your Looker Studio, they can't navigate away to a different link. You, you can put any kind of text that you want or any images that you want. And speaking of that, I also had some folks ask, well, what, I wish it could look like the Canva infographic that you made and have the Looker Studio stuff. So here's the thing. You could create your image in Canva or Adobe Express, whatever you want to create it in, and then export that image just without the numbers and then bring it into Looker Studio. So I'm going to, this is something that you don't always do when you do Looker Studio, but you can, that you can add a page, just kind of like you do, you add a slide and then Google Slides. So I'm going to add a page. So you can see on the left, it says one and two now. And then I'm going to say image, upload from computer. And I think I have it saved. I hope I have it saved. There it is. So here's a copy of a infographic I made in Canva, but I left out all of the numbers. So it's the wrong size, you know, the wrong layout. It's kind of letter up and down, but you could design that in the same ratio that you have your Looker Studio design, you know, like kind of that widescreen we were talking about for a laptop. And then I'm going to go back to page one and just copy this 950. Control C, Control V, and then I can size that down to fit right here. 950 books checked out. So when I share this and somebody views it, they're going to see this right here. They're going to see my Canva design, but they're going to see the number automatically update for the books checked out. So that's another option you could do if you don't want to do the designs and the icons and the colors and all that stuff inside of Looker Studio. You can do it somewhere else, but just leave blanks for those numbers and then pull them in. All right, that's a lot. I think I'm going to stop there because once you get started with this stuff, it, it's kind of addictive. Um, some of my friends have done some really cool things. Jennifer Gilbert and Kendra Waddell have made one for their 40 book challenge. And it's, it's a little more complicated than this, but it's similar. Like the kids are going in and recording the books that they read. And they fill out the form and the title of the book and really hit submit. It's automatically collecting their email address. A cool feature with Looker Studio is that you can filter what people see based on which account they're logged in with. So the kids actually go to a link and, this, and Chrome knows they're logged in as that person and just shows them the books that they've read as a report. It's really cool. It's really, really cool. They've also done some micro-credentialing in the same way where you get little badges on your own customized Looker Studio dashboard. And that's all based on that email address that's being collected in the form. But that that's a whole other thing. I mean, it, it, it can get really complicated. I've seen some really cool transportation things like the where the school buses are doing their routes and have all these reports that show up. I've seen a lot of cool stuff with assessment data and um, behavior things, all all kinds of data. And Looker Studio is not something crazy new or different than other things. It's just the way that you can put the data in and see it visualized and filtered next to each other, which is really hard to do just in Google Sheets. So um, give it a try. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try and help you out. Thanks.